We're here with Giles from Polypipe. Giles, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, good. How's everything um, working for you guys now? Good. Yeah, it's uh, it slowed down slightly, obviously because of the the COVID nineteen. But other than that, you know, business as usual. Um, we're still operating as a business. Uh, things have just sort of quieted down slightly, which is you know expected as you know the merchant partners are, are closing or have shut. Yeah, and you're the you're the um, underfloor heating expert at Polypipe. I say expert. You probably don't <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> We've got some uh, a lot of questions here about underfloor heating that installers have asked you, and and mm. installers will come up to you at shows like Installer 2020 or through your technical headline or that sort right. of to ask you. So we are going to do a uh, an FAQ, and I'm going to play the role of of the installer. So nice. uh, hopefully, um, <laughs> yeah, you can you can say it in terms that even I can understand. <laughs> the first okay. one. Um, can you or should you install underfloor heating under kitchen cupboards? So you can actually install underfloor heating under kitchen cupboards. Um, I think it's it's quite often. Um, well, it's a question that gets asked quite often. Is you know, can you install it? Should you install it? Our recommendation is always that you should install them for heating under kitchen cupboards. Um, you know, should the layout of the kitchen change at some point, you know, you don't want unheated areas within your, your floor surface. Uh, so it is, you know, it's extremely important that you do install them for heating across the full surface area. Perfect. Yeah, we just had our kitchen redone actually, so that would, um, yeah, that would be a nightmare <laughs> if uh, you put it all in and then half of it, the fridge isn't there anymore and all that sort of stuff. That makes sense. Uh, what are the main design requirements of an underfloor heating system? So there are several things that should be considered uh, when planning underfloor heating. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's important that you take everything into consideration. So that's, you know, construction details right the way from insulation properties, the amount of glazing within the build, uh, the type of underfloor heating system. And then there's, you know, your finished floor covering um, and also the type of heat source that you're using. Um, yeah, but Polypipe, you know, we do have functionality and longevity in mind, so we do obviously help you choose the system that best suits your needs, uh, which I think, you know, it's really important because ultimately once it's down, you know, it's there for, you know, a lifetime as such. Uh, so we do need to make sure that it's correctly installed and it's correctly designed. Yeah, you mentioned on the, the heat source, which, and mm. um, there's been some big news coming out today about um, RHI and heat pumps. So is underfloor mm. heating suitable with heat pumps? It is, yes. Yeah. So underfloor heating is the most popular heat emitter to pair with a heat pump. Uh, that's purely down to the fact that underfloor heating operates at much lower uh, temperatures than radiators, uh, which obviously makes it ideal for heat pumps. And by installing underfloor heating now, you know, you're somewhat future proofing your build because obviously as government regulations change, you know, the 2025 target, the 2050 target, uh, you know, it is likely that you will have to install a heat pump at some point in the future. Yeah, that is definitely something, the future proofing side is definitely something to consider. Mm. Uh, you mentioned radiators there. How does the heat up time of different systems compare with standard radiators? So, yeah, underfloor heating operates slightly different to radiators. Um, it, you know, it acts as though, well, the complete surface area acts as a, a low temperature heat emitter, um, you know, and it, it provides a comfortable heat distribution. But it does take slightly longer than radiators, or should I say it can take slightly longer than radiators, um, purely because obviously you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bigger surface area of, of um, floor that you're actually covering uh, to heat up for that, then to obviously transfer you know, into the actual room. Um, this is, you know, it's then outweighed by, you know, cheaper running costs and design freedom. So we don't really see a lot of people asking that question anymore, uh, where we used to, because people are starting to understand, you know, the benefits of the cheaper running costs, the design freedom, um, you know, and, and improvements on, you know, re improvements around control, such as optimum start. Uh, they've also minimised the effects that that would have anyway. Um... When you when it comes to homeowners, so when they, mm. they opt for a different technology, um, traditionally homeowners like we hear like hot rads that you can feel. Yeah, you can you can put your you know tea towels on there to warm up, um, and we know that as a heating system that probably isn't the best way to have them, but that's what homeowners like. So, yes. what's the education process for installers and homeowners that just because you can't feel it's piping hot doesn't mean it isn't working and working efficiently? 
I suppose that comes with it comes with time. You know, people often say, you know, I'm walking on my underfloor heating on my tiles and my tiles aren't warm. But, you know, you've got a body temperature of 36, 37 degrees. You know, your floor temperature should never actually exceed 27. So in theory, you shouldn't actually be able to feel the heat coming from the floor. And it's that it's that education around that really. Um, you know, you, you've got nothing to hang your clothes on. There's always a clothes horse, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> which ultimately you can remove afterwards. You can put it away, and you've got you know a nice a nice free space again. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of benefits around it, I suppose. Uh, this is a good question that leads on to what you just mentioned. Um, what's the best floor covering to be used with underfloor heating? What would your advice for that be? So yeah, there's, there's many floor coverings available now. Uh, you know, you've got your likes of uh, tiles, carpet, LVTs, wood floor. And there's, you know, there's several things that should be considered uh, when choosing the best floor covering. And I think, you know, as I previously mentioned, you know, underfloor heated uses radiant heat to transfer that heat evenly um, and, and provide a comfortable environment. And I think, you know, I think it's important that you, you choose a, a product that's you know, got a high thermal conductivity, that, you know, it's a denser product, um, such as tiles, you know, it's either um, it's, it's either got a higher density or it's got a solid composition, such as tiles, for instance. Um, and that, you know, it will mean that the heat transfers a lot more efficiently through into your room. And that's, you know, that's not to say that you can't install wood or you can't install carpet. Um, it just means that if you do look to install them sort of finished floor coverings, you know, the system needs to be designed correctly. And that's where our design team come in. And they'll take all the TOG values and everything into account and make sure that system does, you know, does operate. Oh, so as a manufacturer, if a if a homeowner is dead set on I want carpet, um, the engineer can work with you guys to help figure out the best way possible. That's right. You know, if, if they want carpet, by all means, they can have carpet. We just need the additional information around, you know, TOG ratings of the carpet, things like that, which we can then build into our design software um, and just make sure that the system, when we supply it, you know, is 100% you know, going to work at the end of the day. Uh, what are the different types of systems for? So you know, Polypipe has the most comprehensive uh, product range available so it is, you know, it is important to understand what the different systems are for. So we, we categorise them under four subcategories. So you've got, you know, you've got solid floor system which uh, includes you know, your red floor plate, your staple system, clip rail and the low profile. You've then got existing floors, which is your overlay systems, which is your overlay plus your overlay uh, light 15, and then also your overlay traditional, which is, you know, the, the heavier board. Um, you've got your suspended floor systems, which is you fit from above, uh, you fit from below spreader plates. So, you know, your aluminium spreader plates that are dead easy to install. You've got your overlay light, again, sort of drops into that as well, uh, purely because it can actually be cut to size and put in between the joists. And then you've got the modular heating panels. So the modular heating panels is quite a unique product to Polypipe uh, and it's perfect for heat pump installations. So that's something that we're obviously seeing a big uptake in at the minute. Um, and then last but not least, you know, there's the floating floor system as well. But I think what we try to do is provide a system that covers every application, you know, whether it's, you know, if it's heat output related, so you need more heat in certain areas, whether it's price related, you know, you've got your staple system if price is an issue. Um, and all of, all of these systems, you know, ultimately, if you are struggling to, um, to make your mind up on what sort of system is best for your, your build, our technical team will be more than happy to help. So. Yeah, we've touched on that. The, the support um, that you guys can offer, uh, heating engineers and installers, mm. what, uh, you mentioned the design team um, and you, got, you work on the tech support as well. So what sort of uh, options are available to, for you as a brand to help engineers? So we've got you know, a, a wide range, to be honest with you. you know, we've got the technical team at Doncaster. Uh, we've got the um, area sales team that are really technically focused as well. Um, you know, we've got two guys in Doncaster on the telephone support line. So they're answering calls day in, day out, five days a week. Um, we've then got, you know, a really comprehensive technical installation guide and website, which we're actually in the process of updating. And I think most importantly, you know, all this is supported by national coverage of specialist stockists. So, you know, you've got them guys as your first point of call as well. 
So, you know, we're, 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 well, we're well covered, really, from a technical aspect. Yeah, that sounds really good. And the registered, heat, registered heating engineer network, mm. um, what are the benefits to installers um, to signing up to that or getting involved with that? So there's, there's, you know, there's several benefits, really, um, you know, including priority on turnarounds and designs. You know, you're coming away with a BPEC accredited qualification. Um, you know, you've got, you'll have in, invites to exclusive events. Uh, you'll be involved in new product development as well, because we believe, or I particularly believe that dialogue with installers will better our product portfolio going forward. So, you know, that engagement is key. Um, and I think most importantly, I don't know if you've seen, but recently we've just launched the extended five year warranty. So we've launched basically if you are part of the REN and a full system installation has been undertaken, uh, you are now eligible for an extended five year warranty. So not only will you be getting a 50 year warranty on your ultra flexible underfloor heating pipe work, uh, you'll now be getting a five year warranty on all other mechanical components. That's right. I love the idea that you can have input into future designs so you can Absolutely. shape the way that the, the, the products you use every day are made. Mm. And brilliant. And um, smart stats, which is something that we hear a lot about in the industry, it's a really hot we topic, do. especially good for consumers because that's the way the world's going. I've got like a home hub in the front room that you can talk to and um, turn the <laughs> so What are the benefits are of smart stats with underfloor heating? So I think that the main benefits that I, I believe is, you know, remote control. Um, you know, you can control your underfloor heating through your smartphone and your tablet, which is becoming more and more popular. Uh, and with the smart, con smart controls that we particularly uh, supply, you can set up um, profiles and recipes within that, within the actual programming, uh, which enables you to control uh, your underfloor heating to better suit, you know, your weekend and your work life. You know, there's the schedules around that. Um, and you know, they also come with you know, connectivity like Amazon Alexa, Google Home, Apple Home Kit, Control for Home Automation. You know, which basically means that you can control more than one app, more than one smart start for one single app, which I think is really important. Because you know, for instance, I've got you know, I've got my doorbell, I've got my heating system, you know, I've got my cameras. Everything's controlled off one off one app, which is fantastic. Uh, which you know it's, it's just nice and easy to get everything together so you're not having to flip through different apps and you know open up different softwares so there's a lot of benefits and if you're in the store who wants to know more or wants to start taking on their first underfloor heating project or wants to get involved with some of the new kit that you guys have got that installers might not know is out there um where would mm. you suggest what would you suggest the first steps for those people would be so first steps you know if they're going to any Sort of any local merchant, to be honest with you, you know, Polypipe are in just about every merchant up and down the country. Um, and they mention, you know, underfloor heating, there will be a rep representative within that branch that can put them in touch with our area sales manager. And then at which point they can make contact and they can come on our course at Doncaster or at one of our other professional development centres, um, you know, and undertake the, the, the BPEC course and ultimately walk away feeling confident. Um, you know, and, and able to fit polypipe underfloor heating. That sounds fantastic. Thanks very much for your time, Giles. No, it's all right. Thank you.